So boys and girls, what the, uh, we just did in this activity is that in your bag was an example of something that was actual texture, whereas up on the screen, what you were looking at is what we call visual texture. So if I have a feather in my hand, I can actually feel the texture. Whereas if I'm looking at a feather that's painted on a piece of paper, I can imagine what that texture is like, but it is an example of what we call visual texture. Now, there was an artist named Edgar Degas. He was fascinated with ballerinas, and he would paint them. There, uh, his paintings are in many of the most famous museums in the world. But a few things that he did in his painting was to use emphasis, where he would emphasize where he wanted you to look by maybe, in this case, making this girl lighter in color than everybody else. Also, that there are a few things giving direction towards her so that we know to look at her. He also used visual texture where he adds all these little details on there to give us the idea of what that fabric must feel like where it's kind of crunchy and stiff and fairy-like at the same time. He also used complementary colors so that we would notice things. He used the blue and the orange here. He also used the red violet and the yellow green right in here to get our attention. But there came a time where he decided that he did not want to keep doing just visual texture, but that he wanted to make something that had actual texture. So he sculpted what is called the little dancer. You will see this someday. There are quite a few different versions of it um, around the world in different famous museums. And when you see it, I want you to remember this moment that I told you someday you were going to see it. And it's a very beautiful thing to look at. But the thing that he did is not only did he sculpt her, but he used actual tool so that he would have actual texture on her skirt. He put a silk bow in her hair. And on her legs and throughout her body, you will see parts of her outfit where you can feel the texture of the shoes or her tights or even this top part right here where you can see the buttons and the part that's flaring out here. Very, very cool. So that's by Edgar Degas. Someone else who wanted to have some actual texture was our friend Vincent van Gogh. Here in Starry Night, this is definitely a two-dimensional painting. It is in a frame. It is not a sculpture where you, there's a little church somewhere that he made where you can put your finger on the steeple and feel that it's sharp and stuff like that. No, it is flat. But Vincent van Gogh, despite the fact that he didn't have money to be wasting paint, he didn't see it as a waste. He wanted it to be that you could see the actual texture of the paint on the uh, canvas. So he would put the paint on very, very thick. And if you ever have the opportunity to see a painting by Vincent van Gogh, you can just kind of turn your head to the side and you'll be able to see the thickness of the paint in the way that he applied it. Here you can even see the um, thickness of the paint on his eyebrows. It would be like if you were allowed to touch this, please don't because you'll get kicked out of the museum. But if you were allowed to feel this, you would be able to feel that texture. Now, this is a portrait. It's called the Arnolfini portrait. And this is another one. Now that we've been talking about it, it's so kind of odd that you are going to notice it uh, also. Um, eh, just trust me. Just let me know when you see it somewhere else. It'll be in a Minion movie or something like that. But you should know the name of it, even though it's kind of hard to remember. It is the Arnolfini portrait. Arnolfini. 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 Feeney portrait by a man named Jan Venek. And he's known for using complementary colors, but what he's most known for is using visual texture. This painting in real life is quite small. I can only imagine how tiny the paintbrushes were that he used to paint this. This woman is standing next to the real deal. And you'll notice that the frame it, in, it, it is in it does actually have actual texture. That, this thing down here comes out quite a bit away. You'd be able to feel that wood and everything. But the painting itself is extremely smooth. However, when we look at the item, when we look at visual texture, we need to start thinking of the words that we think of when, of how it would feel. So we're not going to say it's dark but we might say 
it feels like wool or it feels like roughly a little bit or it feels bumpy? Does it feel cold or hot, smooth or rough? What do these beads feel like in your imagination or these tassels here? This, is it? What temperature is it? What texture is it? Is it smooth? Is it bumpy? Is it jagged? Is it sharp? Is it dull? Here's some glass. Here's even a peach. These are shoes. Some kids have said hard. Some kids have said it feels like the, the you can feel the grain of the wood in there. This, you guys know what he would feel like. If you even feel your own hand right now, it's great texture. That's, is that cool or warm? This is a little broom. Sometimes you see brooms that look like this at Thanksgiving. They smell like cinnamon. They're kind of stiff and prickly. Even here, you know, maybe know what lace feels like. One of my kindergartners was like, oh, that must be so itchy to have that fur right there. But just imagine what it took to make these details and to make this texture look so real that we could imagine what it would be to run our finger over the sewing there on that leather. Really cool. Last but not least, um, we've been looking at this painting about George Washington. Um, I had told you that it's called Parson Weems' Tale, but I'll tell you why. The reason it's called that is because there was a man named Mason Weems, and his friends all knew him as Parson. And Parson Weems wrote this book of the history of the life of George Washington. And in it, he tells this story about George Washington chopping down the cherry tree. Turns out it wasn't real, and yet the story stuck, and that's why this painting is called Parson Weems' Fable. What, it's a fable? Right, it's a fake story. So that is why this painting by Grant Wood is called Parson Weems' Fable. And in Parson Weems' Fable, Grant Wood went through great uh, effort to add texture to the painting, even to be able to see the veins on this man's hand. Um, now, if you have ever sat next to someone who's older, you've probably been able to see the texture in their hand. I know I used to sit next to my grandma in church and just kind of feel around on the veins on her hand. It's not something you young people have yet, but I know I have it on mine. And he even has the texture of the brick and took all this time to make the texture of the grass as well as the cherries. Now today we're going to be making a project that has both implied and visual texture. The uh, I mean uh, actual texture and visual texture. Good grief. You are going to be taking a piece of metal and you are going to be creating texture in the middle and so that someone could take their finger and actually feel the texture. Whereas on the outside, you are going to be drawing what looks like texture and yet when you feel it, it will be smooth. These are some examples of kids who are finished with their artwork and how beautiful they turn out. I'm going to be showing you a video of how we're going to be doing this right now.